You may have heard of the big five mass extinctions in Earth's history, or that we're currently in the sixth mass extinction, but there have actually been way more than five or six mass extinctions in Earth's history. And today, I'm going to be talking about all the mass extinctions in Earth's history that nobody really ever talks about. Hello, Editing Rachel here. If you don't know, this is actually the part two to a two-parter video I did about these lesser-known extinctions because when I tried to do it as a one-parter, it went way too long. So you want to see the part one. It came out last week, and in that video, I went over the big five mass extinctions just so we could recap what they are. And as you can see on the screen here, I have videos talking about each and every one of these, so you can check those out. I'll link them in my description box below. I then went over the lesser known mass extinctions and kind of piled them in to this ranking based on chronology. This list on the screen right now is based on time. But in this video, in this part two video, I will at the end of this one rank them all, including last week's part one video extinctions, in terms of ecological severity. And you might be surprised by the ranking because the top five aren't always the top five based on every metric. So now we'll get back into the video, which includes talking about every non-Big Five mass extinction listed here from the Late Devonian onward. In the last week's video, I went from the Precambrian to the Late Devonian, so check that out if you were interested in those earlier extinctions. And I should mention before we jump into the video that the Devonian was full of ups and downs in terms of life extinction recovery because of a lot of cyclic anoxic or lack of oxygen events in the ocean. So I talk about why that is and those early to mid Devonian events in the previous video, but in this video we talk about the late Devonian and I start by talking about how those earlier events in the Devonian really exacerbated the later events. So that's what that means if you're interested in context. Okay, now back to the video. The unfortunate repeated anoxic pulses in the early to mid Devonian likely greatly exacerbated the largest Devonian extinction event 372 million years ago because those lists of organisms we just talked about were just hanging on by a thread after these extinction events and then they were hit by another one after another one and then finally this huge one at the Frasnian and Faminian boundary. This is one of the big five mass extinctions in Earth's history and I do have a video fully talking about this extinction event. However, some studies place it in sixth place based on marine genera loss. So you can see in the table at the bottom here there is the ranking of mass extinction events through Earth's history based on different things. The first four are just different studies rankings based on marine genera loss and the last column here is based on ecological severity. In all of the rankings you can see there is a common first place which is the end permian or the great dying event so that one was largest regardless of how you rank the events and then the end ordovician is the second place in most cases but not all but if we look for the ff extinction here the late devonian mass extinction we see it's in sixth place in the first two fifth place in the next two however many marine groups went extinct and the extremely large and widespread devonian reef ecosystems never fully recovered. And for this reason, the FF event is placed in fourth in terms of ecological severity, and that's why it remains within the top five or big five mass extinctions. The cause was likely due to deep ocean anoxia, which spread to shallow parts of the ocean, and that's what made this event so severe ecologically. And this was likely initially triggered by the spread of deeper rooted plants over land, as well as large Igneans province volcanism. This event seemed to be just a more intense version of the transgressive anoxia that had occurred previously repeatedly throughout the Devonian period. And speaking of repeated events, the Devonian ended with another final anoxia-caused extinction event around 359 million years ago, just at the end of the period. This event caused extinctions among conodonts, trilobites, cephalopods, again, such as ammonoids, brachiopods, and corals, and this caused loss of up to 21% marine genera and 16% marine families, which is nearly on par with the FF event. The end Devonian extinctions coincide with a possible impact around 120 kilometers in diameter in Western Australia, but the absence of ejecta beds 
raise questions regarding the impact's validity. So potentially there was an impact that contributed to triggering this event, but um, it's still uncertain whether this is accurate information or not. And regardless of whether it is or not, the Devonian is filled with transgressive anoxic pulses that also cause extinction. So clearly it does not require that there would have been an impact because it's just as likely that just another one of these transgressive anoxic events had caused that in Devonian mass extinction, especially considering the groups that it affected. Now getting to the Mississippian Pennsylvanian or Serpakovian event. <laughs> Again, let me know if I'm pronouncing that right. This occurred in the Carboniferous period of the Paleozoic era, which is broken up into sub-periods, Mississippian and Pennsylvanian. So just in the middle of the Carboniferous in between the Mississippian and Pennsylvanian periods is when this event occurred. And this is the seventh largest mass extinction of the Phanerozoic era, and it coincided with an ice age or cooling event which I talk about in my Carboniferous Ice Age video, which I will link in my description box below. This Ice Age took place during the beginning or building of Pangaea, and this marks the greatest Ice Age of the Phanerozoic Eon. And the Phanerozoic Eon, if you don't know, represents the time from the Cambrian to today, which is about 550 million years ago to zero million years ago. And you might remember the Carboniferous period as being this warm coal swamp world that deposited a bunch of carbon. Well, it was during the first half, the Mississippian subperiod of the Carboniferous. However, this coal swamp world led to abundant organic carbon burial and organic carbon burial because it decreases carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases in the atmosphere causes cooling. And because much of the land was covered in such coal swamps that caused an abundance of organic carbon burial, there was a drastic cooling event due to this drastic carbon burial. And that marks the beginning of the Pennsylvanian period, which began this cooling and drying trend that continued until the mid-Permian, the period after the Carboniferous is the Permian. This brings us to the Permian, which went from the end of the Carboniferous or end of the Pennsylvanian around 299 million years ago until 252 million years ago. Within the Permian, there were two to three mass extinctions. However, in some cases, we clump all of these into either one or potentially two events. The first major mass extinction in the Permian is the Capitanian or Guadalupian mass extinction. And these losses during this time, around 259 million years ago, were originally rolled into the end Permian event, which caused us to believe that the end Permian mass extinction was greater in magnitude than it actually was. Now we recognize that the Capitanian or Guadalupian event was a separate event or potentially two separate events from the end Permian event. And I say events here because there were potentially two extinction pulses throughout the Capitanian in the mid and the end Capitanian. And the ranking of this event or events has been debated and shifted around a lot. Recent assessments suggest it is fourth in terms of magnitude with 62% species and 33 to 35% general loss. And upon recognition that the Capitanian and End Permian were two separate events, the latter, the End Permian, which occurred around 252 million years ago, was corrected to a percent species loss of about 81% rather than 95%, which was previously estimated when we globbed all of these events together. Even so, even after being reduced to 81%, it is still by far the greatest extinction event in Earth's history. And it occurred just 9 to 10 million years after the Capitanian or Guadalupian event or events. It caused total marine and land devastation and is the only recorded mass extinction of insects through Earth's history. It is the largest mass extinction based on any metric. And for that reason, I do have a full video talking about this great dying event. And I linked it earlier to the top right. And it's also linked in the description box below, but I want to talk a little bit more about it because not everything is figured out about this event. Some suggest that the Great Dying, the end Permian event around 252 million years ago, represents two pulses of extinction separated by about 200,000 years of recovery and diversification, but some suggest that it was just one pulse of extinction beginning around 252.3 million years ago and lasting around 200,000 years. Recent studies have suggested that the marine extinctions occurred in two pulses, whereas the land plant extinctions were contemporaneous with only the second marine pulse and underwent only that one extinction pulse. 
And the potential causes include anoxia, so lack of oxygen in the oceans, ocean acidification, global warming, volcanic winter uh, to sulfate aerosols that form due to sulfur compounds released from volcanoes, which can block sunlight and cause volcanic winter, ozone destruction by, again, mainly gases released from volcanoes, atmospheric oxygen depletion, so not only ocean anoxia, but also even atmospheric oxygen decrease, which takes a lot to decrease uh, oxygen in the atmosphere, poisoning of life by toxic metals and sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide is produced due to anaerobic bacteria that thrive in anoxic events. So when anoxia occurs, the anaerobic bacteria produce hydrogen sulfide, which if it gets shallow enough in the ocean, can go on to land and harm both marine and land life. And toxic metals can be released by volcanoes. There have been mercury spikes observed with the Permian and other mass extinctions in Earth's history. And there was potentially even an impact that occurred during this time and potentially triggered some of these changes in the climate that caused the extinctions during the end Permian. The major trigger, however, was Lip or Large Igneous Province eruptions in the Siberian Traps. I talk about the extent of these volcanic eruptions in my Great Dying video, so check out that video for more. And it brings us to our next event, which is in the Triassic, the early Triassic, which saw life struggle to recover from the Great Dying because, again, it was the largest extinction of all time. Somebody count in the comments for me how many times I've said that in this video. In any case, life obviously struggled to recover and it also was hit with three additional extinction events during the early Triassic as it tried to recover from the end Permian event. These are shown on the timeline here to the right. The Triassic period began around 250 million years ago, right at the end of the Permian, and went to around 200 million years ago. The 200 million year ago event is the late Triassic event that is part of the big five mass extinctions, but there was also early and mid-Triassic events that occurred, and we'll talk about those now. The early events were likely caused by ongoing warming and ocean anoxia, as well as further input of toxic metals to the oceans after the end Permian volcanism and event. And this caused major carbon isotope excursions, which is how we can track uh, the timing of these events and the correlation of the chemical trends as well as the trends in the biosphere. However, eventually after these three extinction events hit and life finally got through this horrible period in Earth's history, it did recover and diversify in the middle Triassic. But then another extinction event hit. During this end middle Triassic extinction, this caused losses among crinoids, scallops, corals, ammonoids, and conodonts. And on land, archaeosaur diversification came at the expense of herbivorous tetrapods, possibly reflecting changes in dominant flora, so a change in major land plants at the time. And this middle Triassic extinction event coincides with an interval of extreme wetness called the Carnian Humid Episode. This wetness likely increased weathering and ocean anoxia. Again, weathering can cause ocean anoxia because an increase in weathering increases nutrients that are delivered to the ocean and increases primary productivity, which, like I mentioned earlier, can cause ocean anoxia below such blooms. And this event resembled a mini end Permian scenario, likely with a similar driver, volcanism. However, the volcanism and resulting extinctions at this time are minor compared to those that occurred at the end Triassic around 200 million years ago, about 30 million years later. This extinction event was devastating enough to be included in the Big Five, and it was triggered by camp volcanism or volcanism in the central Atlantic magmatic province. And so rifting or separating within this zone allowed magma to come up and cause major volcanism, and that triggered the end or late Permian mass extinctions. And I talk about this more in my late Triassic mass extinction video, and again, uh, that'll be linked below. Finally, we have the last of the lesser known major mass extinction events, and that is the early Jurassic Torsian uh, extinctions, which occurred only 20 million years after the end Triassic. Only 5% of families were lost during this time, but shallow marine mollusks suffered heavily, and the marine extinctions were likely caused by a global warming and subsequent ocean anoxia. There's actually a few recognized 
severe and globally spread ocean anoxic events, or OAEs, throughout Earth's history, and the Torsian event is one of them. It's marked by an extreme negative and positive carbon isotope oscillation at the time, negative during the warming and positive during the extreme carbon burial that is associated with ocean anoxia. And the initial trigger of the warming that triggered the anoxia may have been volcanism in the Karoo and Ferrer traps, which were widespread and located in southern Gondwana at the time. However, unlike the end Permian and end Triassic scenarios, this is one of the greatest continental flood basalt outpourings of the Phanerozoic Eon, and it's associated with only minor ecological crisis or minor extinction event. Why this is, why it was only minor when the Lip or Large Igneous Province eruptions were so great and widespread, is still one of the mysteries of the fossil record, and I encourage you to go into research about it if you'd like to. So earlier we ranked these extinction events based on chronology or age, younger going upward, as we see in the rock record. However, what about their ranking by severity? There's a few different ways to rank these, again, by loss of genera, loss of families, etc. But in terms of the ecological severity ranking from the table I showed earlier, which I will link the source for down below, the top mass extinction in all scenarios is the end Permian mass extinction or the Great Dying, which can sometimes include both the Capitanian or Guadalupian extinction as well as the end Permian or Great Dying, but even if the Guadalupian or Capitanian event is excluded, it is the greatest event of all time regardless. Then we have the end Cretaceous event, which is second in ecological severity. I didn't talk about that one here because that is one of the big five, and I talk about that in a separate video that I'll link down below. Then we have the end Triassic mass extinction, the late Devonian or FF boundary mass extinction, the end Permian mass extinction, this time the Capitanian or Guadalupian event, the Mississippi and Pennsylvanian one with the largest ice age of all time. Then we have a tie for seventh place with the end Devonian or Hangenberg mass extinction and the end Ordovician mass extinction, which is typically among the big five mass extinctions if ranked based on marine general loss. Then we have another one of the late Devonian mass extinctions. And finally, we have the Silurian mass extinction called the Lau or Ludfordian mass extinction. So the third of the three that we talked about earlier within the Silurian period. And these are ranked based on ecological severity. Remember that this is different than rankings based on percent species, genera, or family loss because ecological severity depends on the magnitude of harm to the ecosystems as a whole rather than individual species. But in the future, as we continue to interpret the fossil record, these rankings may very well change. And they do change a lot if you look at different data sets and different papers. So, you know, kind of just depends what you're looking at. And if you want to contribute to future research in the area of mass extinction events, I very much encourage you to do so. There's still so much we don't know. It's not just paleontology. There's a lot to reconstruct in terms of geochemistry. My PhD research actually deals with reconstructing ancient ocean chemistry history and the specific signatures and rocks that we use to do so. And so there's still a lot of research to be done in these fields. And I very much encourage you to go into this if this interests you. With that, guys, as always, my references are linked down below. And I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.